Why proper alignment in yoga? If you've ever been to any one of my classes, you know I talk a lot about alignment. I'm always talking about alignment of the hips and the shoulders and the feet and which position your foot should be pointed and if you should be in parallel. So I'm sure you've heard me say this if you've been in any one of my classes and maybe, just maybe you might be wondering, well, why is proper alignment so important? And I have to start out by saying that every yoga class is different. There are different styles of yoga. Some emphasize alignment over others, but I was trained in an Iyengar based uh, yoga style. And that tradition really emphasizes proper alignment in the poses. So the other thing I want to say at the outset is that every body is different. So uh, what may be correct alignment for me may be slightly different for other people. So it's not something that's super rigid and hard and fast. As you know, I say all the time, everybody is different. So we have to modify the alignment cues for our own body. But having said that, there is a traditional or there is a standard alignment for many yoga poses that is, that is there for a reason. So I'm gonna go through a bunch of reasons why the standard alignment for many yoga poses is important and so you can adapt them and think about them for yourself and how you can adapt them to your own body. So probably the first reason and a really important reason, maybe the most important reason is because of safety and because of, um, because having proper alignment will help you to reduce, minimize, prevent injuries altogether. So we wanna be preventing injuries. We don't want to be doing anything that's gonna be harmful to our bodies. Now, yoga is probably one of the few physical activities that have very few injuries, but having said that, it is possible to injure yourself in yoga, especially repeatedly doing a pose with incorrect alignment may cause your, you know, may cause you to, to injure yourself. So the first reason is to prevent injuries. If you have incorrect alignment, that's pretty severe. I mean, not a slight incorrect alignment is probably not gonna lead to an injury, but if you have incorrect alignment and you keep repeating the same incorrect alignment that's actually damaging your body over time, that is when uh, injuries can occur. So just to give you a quick example, and this is an example actually of how to modify alignment for your body, uh, you know, we talk a lot about having joint pain here in this group. So if you have back pain and a teacher makes you to round your spine in a particular position, but you know for yourself that if you round your spine, that's actually the opposite of what you should be doing, you can injure yourself if you repeatedly do the incorrect alignment over and over again. Now one time, most of the time, it's not gonna be a problem. It's when you repeatedly do something in incorrect alignment for your body and for what you need over a period of time. So for many people, myself included, rounding my spine is not generally such a great idea because I wanna be protecting my lower back. And I know for many people who have back issues, rounding their spine is not generally a good idea. So even though the teacher may cue to round your spine, you know that for your alignment, what works for your body is to keep the spine straight or arching, but not rounding. So that's the first reason that we want to be concerned about our alignment is to keep our bodies safe, to keep our bodies free from injury. Um, so related to that is also the idea that when we are in proper alignment, our bodies are actually being held in the way that it is that it was created to be held. So in optimal alignment. So just to give a quick example, our neck, I always cue when we're standing up straight or sitting, you want your head, your ears right over your shoulders. So I'll just show you quickly that if we're like this in this alignment with the ears forward of the shoulders, that is not the optimal alignment for our neck. So if you are repeatedly in that position, you can cause damage to the discs, to the upper part of your spine, your cervical spine. And so we don't want to be in that position 
ever really or very very little unless you're doing it for a specific reason so we want to be in optimal alignment because it's going to help us to get the most out of the poses, the postures, the sequence, the class that we are doing. It will help our muscles to function in the way that they're supposed to function. It will help the muscles to align how they are supposed to align and prevent misalignments of our musculature. So the bones align in the correct way will help the muscles to also align in the correct way and that will prevent us um, from having from injuring ourselves as well as to help us to get the most out of uh, the particular pose, the particular sequence. So that's the second reason that we want to think about our alignment to help us to get the most benefits, to get, help us to get the most out of whatever it is we happen to be doing at the time. So the third reason is that it helps us to develop body awareness proprioception. So a lot of times people, especially as we get older, we lose the ability to really understand where our bodies are in space and helping us to be thinking about our alignment helps us to keep our proprioception strong to help us to know where our bodies are in space. So an example of that would be if I say, bring your arms to shoulder height. A lot of times we want to have our arms in shoulder height. And sometimes in classes, especially with older people, the arms may be here or they may be really low. And this is because people have not, um, they're not maybe thinking about their alignment or they've lost the ability or it's getting weaker to understand where their bodies are in space. So in thinking about our alignment, it helps us to think about our posture both in yoga class and obviously we want to take our yoga with us off of the mat and out into the real world so it helps us to maintain a strong sense of where our bodies are what our posture is doing and to just help us to live happy healthy and pain-free so that is the, the third reason the fourth reason is that proper alignment especially of our upper body our shoulders our spine will help us to breathe better, will help our breathing. Because what can happen a lot of times is if we are rounded forward, like we do uh, over our computers or looking at our phones, if we are like this, just to show you, I think you can see, it closes, it closes our front body, it reduces the space for our lungs to move and so therefore compromises our ability to breathe. So we want to think about opening up our chest, keeping our shoulders down and back, lifting our torso and really lengthening the spine because it will help us to breathe better, it will help us to take in more air, more oxygen, nourishes the body, oxygenates the body. So proper alignment is actually helpful for our breath and it's actually really important to help us to breathe properly which again tends to affect older people especially when once you start rounding forward and not thinking about keeping your spine nice and straight so uh second to last reason is that it helps you to stay present it helps you to calm your mind to connect your mind and your body in a yoga class you're thinking about your alignment you're thinking about where your arms are you're thinking about what your feet are doing you're thinking about your core it's it's it helps you to sort of be present to take your mind maybe off of what you you know otherwise may be thinking about what you need to do the next day or later it just helps you to stay present when you're thinking about your alignment without getting too obsessive about it you know we don't want to get too rigid and obsessive about anything but when you when you're in your body in a class thinking about your alignment it helps the mind body connection and hopefully helps you to be relaxed and and calm um yeah so as i said uh the key thing here is to feel stable in a pose and to realize that everybody is different so for example in tadasana or mountain pose the basic cue is that the feet are hip width and parallel and for some people hip width is just too narrow it feels unstable some uh some people also say that for mountain pose some teachers your feet should be all the way touching especially older people that is not stable for them they need to have their feet a little wider and for some people also parallel is not 
even possible because of the way their legs and their feet are positioned. It's very difficult, very uncomfortable to have your feet parallel. So the idea is to just do the best that you can to bring your body into this optimal alignment and work from there. So, but if you're not doing exactly what you think is being asked for, please know that the most important thing is for you to be feeling safe and comfortable and not any anything hurting. So um, that is definitely something that you want to keep in mind that everybody's different. You're going to look different from somebody else in the class. And it's really important to know what the traditional or the optimal alignment is, but to know that you can and you should really modify the alignment for what is going to work for your body. So those are the main reasons that it is really important to be thinking about our alignment and to get to Patricia's question. Patricia asked a great question about the alignment in tabletop position. She asked, well, how do you know when your hands are right underneath your shoulders or your knees are right underneath your hips? If you don't have a mirror right next to you and you don't have anybody there to tell you, how do you know if you're hands and your knees are in the correct position and this is an awesome question because i'm sure lots of people have have um, thought about this so my answer was that certainly with the arms you can take a look at your shoulders and see where your shoulders are in tabletop or all fours and then just look down at your wrists or look down at your hands and you want your hands to be more or less right under the shoulders now if you have really tight shoulders you can have the arms a little wider so maybe on the outside of the shoulders but again, the key thing here is what feels stable and secure for you. Now, the knees might be a little trickier because we can't really see where our knees are in relation to our hips. So what I would suggest here is that you basically play around with it. You know, walk your knees maybe a little closer to your hands, walk the knees a little bit further away and see if you can kind of find that place that feels the most stable and secure for you. And if you really think about it, if you're really mindful about how you're feeling, I'm going to bet that you will end up with in that place with the knees more or less underneath your hips, because the reason that we want you to be in that position is that it is going to be the most secure and the most stable position for you to be in when you're on hands and knees. So thank you very much, Patricia. I hope that question helped you to understand, uh, you know, a technique for, for figuring out how to, how to know where you are in, in tabletop. And if anybody else has any questions about alignment or any other questions that um, are related to this topic, please let me know in the comments below and I'll be happy to do my best to answer. So I have a short video on a tabletop, a sequence in tabletop that I'm going to also post that you can have a look at that and let me know if, um, you know, if this was helpful. And then also, if you have any other questions on any other yoga topic, I would, you know, please either message me or send, you know, just leave it in the comments and I'll do my best to answer. So that is all I wanted to share today. I don't think I have any questions. So I am going to say bye and hope you have a great weekend and I'll see you again soon. Bye.